Welcome to Bench Warmers, another episode and another special guest joining us again. Kate Groves is back on the couch. Oh, Bell. Of Did course, you? last Hello? week, last week we saw you try out some roller roller birds training. Did still loosening up the muscles? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Have you committed yet? Are you are you going back? There's still nothing on the table as yet. Okay. Oh, no, just waiting for more money. Uh, <laughs> just waiting for the contract to come through. Hold it, oh, <laughs> sure, here we go. Um, but this week you went to see two two completely different teams, but again, local teams as well. What an unbelievable afternoon we had at least. So, um, absolutely fantastic facilities there. The We went to see Wirral Whips versus North Wales roller derby. So it was a really close game. Both teams less than sort of 15, 20 miles apart. A lot of people who know each other seen you know out and about and a lot of friends in the team we I know we did the interviews with uh, particularly Kat who was quite passionate about the links between North Wales and Wirral and we actually spoke to Nikki and Nikki was saying that there was a lot of learning experiences shared learning experiences between those two teams and also Liverpool as well to improve the development of the sport in the area so how did it go down the game itself Amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, we're all we're out of the block so quickly. Mm. Points on the board within the first few minutes, and by sort of half time, you're looking quite significant difference in the score. I mean, the, the final score was two eight six to ninety. That's okay. a big score. Oh, yeah, which was a big score. Although in the interviews, it was interesting, and I'm sure you'll see in the foot that the highlight the, the highlights reel that quite a, quite an interesting look on the score line as well, which I was interested in as well. Okay, well, we've got all the footage, we've got interviews, we've got highlights, so let's uh, let's take a look, see how it went. So we're here today with Sarah, otherwise known as Knit One Hit, one from Wirral. What does this local derby mean today? It's a big deal, it's part of British Champs, so um, it's like at the moment we've both won both of our games, so it's uh, kind of between us two in a way at the moment, I mean obviously touch wood but um, it's a big deal we've kind of grown with North Wales so we've kind of we're kind of like a sister team in a way so it's kind of like a derby but not really a derby but it means a lot to us a hell of a lot to us and what have you done to prepare for today's game everything we've done off skates training extra on skates training we've done mental toughness training we've done everything we've like fixed dietary stuff we've talked about energizing ourselves properly everything we've done everything and you're the first of a double header here what does this game mean to you personally today um it means a lot i always prefer going on first so it means i get to enjoy the rest of the day but for me personally um i just i just want to do the best for my team i never really think of it as a personal thing i always think of it as a team thing so whatever i can do for the team so personally it's just not letting them down keeping them happy doing the best for them and what excites you about roller derby oh, everything hitting someone um skating really fast the teamwork the camaraderie the fast pace the change of offense to defense so quickly everything being on skates what position do you play on the uh, i'm a blocker ring? you're a blocker yeah blocker so uh, a lot of physical work for you in the game today yeah yeah it's not as um like cardio as the jammer it's more kind of um yeah physical so it's like hitting and holding people back but yeah it's physical and have you got some friends and family coming down to cheer you on today no no one today but <laughs> a, a, there's going to be a big crowd here so does that yeah, help like, get, yeah 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 but no family <laughs> well thank you very much for speaking to us thank you. good luck in the game so and much. enjoy thank, thank you. you so this is cat otherwise known as she dog from north wales Cathy, you looking forward to today's game? Really looking forward to today's game, yeah. We've been waiting for this for a long time. What preparations have you done for today's bout? Oh, training every week, you know, and then some outside training to really up our game. And what's the camaraderie like in these local rivalries? Oh, it's brilliant. It gets a little bit, I don't know, not, not out of hand. It just sort of, everyone winds each other up, teasing each other. Really good fun, though. All in good sport. With it being so close geographically, it obviously means a lot to the lot to both teams today. It is. It's like they're the team we want to beat, and they're the same for us, you know. So we all really want to win this game. As much as it's in champs, there's still a little bit of like sibling rivalry almost. <laughs> um, we love it. We really do. Tell me about the position you play for North Wales. Um, I tend to play as a jammer. Okay. Um, but I do play a bit of all the positions, so pivot and 
block as well as jam. What do you prefer? I love jamming, but I have got, grown quite fond of pivoting because okay. I get to jam a little then as well. Okay, so you like to whip round that track? I do, I do, I love it. Thank you for speaking to us. Good luck today, okay, enjoy. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. So, Nikki, otherwise known as? Marla Slinger. From the Wirral uh, Whippeteers. Okay, tell us a bit about the setup here at Wirral. Um, the league was founded four and a half years ago by a lady called Lil Lily De Shrink who was a fan of roller derby, looked around the Wirral and realised we didn't have a team and thought she'd start one. She didn't have much experience herself, so we worked closely with Liverpool Roller Birds. They came and did our first ever intake, told us all about the sport. Mm -hmm. And since then, humble beginnings where we could only hire a, a small church hall and we skated around a piano. Mm -hmm. um, we've grown to a league of over 80 members now with um, women's A team, B team and a men's team as well. There must be a lot of pride then to host an event such as this today where you've got a local rivalry North Wales travelling up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a source of real pride and achievement to look around. Um, a game like this takes a lot of um, volunteers, helpers, skaters, refs, um, non-skating officials. So to look around and think we started with just really a handful of members and we've grown to this. It's a great feeling. And why choose Rayola Derby? Um, for me, it's about, I don't know another sport where you can get so involved because it's very grassroots and DIY. You can get really stuck into organising, working with people. I myself have done um, coaching for the league. I look after marketing for the league. So you can, you can put a lot into it. And I think the more you put in, the more you get out. Are you finding these events are raising the numbers of people coming into the game? Yeah, I think the awareness of roller derby is slowly growing. Um, there's still a lot of people who, when you say roller derby to them, they're not quite sure what it is. But we've got a lot. I think the sport's got a lot of online presence, so you can quickly direct someone to a Facebook or to a website, and they can learn about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's slowly creeping into the consciousness of um, of the the UK sports. And if you were go to go out into say schools and market it, what would you say to them? How would you get them hooked on the sport? Um, I'd say that the biggest thing is that it's all inclusive and that it really does mean all inclusive. So any age, I mean, at the moment, our league's 18 only, 18 and above, sorry, but the junior leagues are popping up and that's something that we'd love to do. So I'd say it's for anybody. It's fun, it's fast, it's feisty. Um, it's great to belong to a team and it's great that in the sport, there's a level for everybody. So you might play as a C team player, a B team player, but it's there's something for everyone. And we noticed that you get out to see a lot of the games we saw you at the Liverpool Dundee yeah. about recently. What does that feel like to be representing the Wirral? Oh, it's fabulous. Again, I think a lot of people aren't aware that we're here. So most of the time we have to affiliate ourselves with Liverpool. We'll say, oh, we're from the Wirral, it's near Liverpool. But to get the Wirral name out there, I mean, we're proud of where we're from. And it's nice to be ambassadors for the borough and to say, you know, we do have a team. We, we are, you know, a big group of people here and it's, it's nice. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for speaking to us today. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. So, Kat, what a game here today. Well, yeah, that was a good game. Really hard game. So much fun. I was just, see that you enjoyed it, but you did pick up an injury. How are you feeling now? Yeah, OK. My face hurts a little bit, but it's still attached, so I think I'll live. I suppose it emphasises the physical nature of the sport. It does, and it's a risk everyone's willing to take. If you play roller derby, you know there's a chance of getting hurt, but the good outweighs the bad. And with a scoreline such as this, what positives do you take away as a team? Oh, we learn so much. We learn a lot more from a loss than we do from a win, and I know that's strange to say, but we have so much that we can work on. A lot of strength training. They're a very strong team. I, I'm really impressed. It was brilliant. And as an event as a whole, it must be fantastic to be part of this. The British Champs is absolutely brilliant to be a part of. Really chuffed that we got to come back again this year and have a go. Maybe a chance of going to the finals this year, that would be nice. Um, we'll keep on fighting for it. Well, um, uh, dis disappointed on the result today, but a fantastic game. Thank you very much for speaking to us and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. So after an exciting bout here at Lisa, we're here with Jenny, who is the world captain, aka Stable Gunner. Nice. Wow, what a scoreline today. It is amazing. We played so well. We we wanted to play as a team and that's what it felt like today. Our three things are teamwork, communication and trusting each other. And it doesn't matter who you're playing. 
or what you're doing, if you've got them three elements, you're going to have a win. How does it feel being that local derby as well against uh, North Wales? It's good. It's always good to win in your home place. It's just generally always good to win, but it's nice to see everyone pulling together and in your own venue, it's especially great. And a part of the venue, what a fantastic crowd here today. Lots oh, yeah. of noise. Does it's that lovely. cheer you on? Our Whips fans are just known everywhere for the amount of noise they make. Wherever we go, everyone says, oh, your fans are great because we make so much noise. We really love it and everyone involved loves it and you can see that. We noticed you took a really early lead, you really asserted yourself in the scoreline. Did that help for the rest of the game? Um, we try not to focus on the score. We, we try and think of each jam as an individual jam and just focus on what we're doing at that jam. The score will take care of itself if we're doing what we need to do on track, so that's the way we kind of see it. So it was great that we were winning, but that's not the mindset we try and be in. We try and be in a let's do this together and no matter what, we will finish like winners because we've worked together. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Congratulations thank on the victory, much. and we'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Welcome to another Farnham Report, the last Farnham Report from these shows. Next uh, week I'll be talking to you live from the United States of America, so get ready for some uh, some cool things to be happening over there, I hope, if I'm not arrested on entry. Um, what can I say, last weekend's game of the day was of course the Blitz and the Warriors, uh, a game that everybody was excited about, a game that hopefully gives us a glimpse into the future. Uh, I know a lot of people are already talking about the possibility of that being the Brit Ball final, I guess we'll have to see, see where it goes this year. Um, first game of course of the season for these two teams to be meeting, they meet again later in the season um, what can I say the Warriors and the Blitz we know it's a rivalry we knew that they, they, we know they, they, they're fighting for bragging rights down there in London um, and at 10-10 we thought we were in for a classic game we thought this is going to go all the way down to the wire we're going to see some sort of phenomenal game that's going to go into overtime it's going to be so close but the second half the, the adjustments were made by the Warriors and the Blitz had no answer for them the Warriors ended up winning the game 38-10. It was a really, really comfortable victory. Probably one of the more comfortable victories that they've had over the Blitz in their uh, long history. Um, you know, it, it dates back now to 2013, I believe, was the last time that the Blitz actually beat the Warriors. That was in um, a regular season game. There's, there's got to be something done there at the Blitz. I don't know whether they're distracted by European football. Who knows? I know that they focus on that a lot, and I know that that's where they, their heart is, whereas the Warriors are focused on just keeping and dominating British football. But it's definitely going to liven it up for the second half of the season. Closer to home, just a little bit. Um, the Nighthawks travel up the Gateshead Senators. Of course, the last time they travelled up there, that was where they suffered their defeat when they played uh, at the at 2013 in the playoffs. I believe that was the last time that they actually had a competitive defeat. So we were expecting big things from this game, and we certainly got them. Uh, what can I say? The game started two quick touchdowns, really, from the Nighthawks in the first quarter, giving them a 14-0 lead. Um, the, the Hawks scored again to make it 20-0 before the Senators made it 20-6, uh, and then quickly made it 20-12. So we thought we were in for a really, really quick game here. Again, the Nighthawks offense responded. They managed to get a passing touchdown and they managed to get another rushing touchdown for a 34-12 halftime lead. Gateshead, they knew that they had to do something in the second half and they came out and drew first blood. And this is where it turned into some sort of Rocky movie uh, because it was punch for punch. Gateshead scored, Nighthawks scored, Gateshead scored, Nighthawks scored. Uh, we're going into the fourth quarter, it's 48-26. We can't believe the game that we're seeing down there. Um, uh, both teams scored again in the fourth quarter. The final score up there was 55-34. Now, I know that the offense there with Merseyside will be so excited. They, they had a wonderful game. Uh, Laurent particularly managed to run in four touchdowns. Um, they run the ball so so well up there against Gateshead so it'll be a great great thing for them the defense 34 points I know that they won't be happy with that I know that the defense haven't conceded those sorts of points since uh, last season in the postseason where they played the Farnham Knights and then they played against Edinburgh in the final they're not going to be happy there's going to be adjustments made there on the defense and there has to be if they want to go all the way this year um, the big news of course in baseball this week if any it's been hard to miss it of course was that Pablo Sandoval the uh, third baseman for the Boston Red Sox got benched for a game. How How did he get benched, I hear you say? Don't worry, I've got the answer for you. That's right. He was on Instagram during the seventh inning. I believe he went to the toilet. He sat down. And as we do these days with our phones, he went onto Instagram. He managed to like a picture of a girl. And apparently that's against their social media policy. So they benched him the night after. 
But of course, the real big news, the news that everybody's talking about, happens to be the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, the, the Cardinal way has been talked about in baseball for many years. Everybody knows how good they are and how they're a wonderful team, but apparently they've been accused of hacking. I don't think it's really hacking. I might be slightly biased, of course. I am a Cardinals fan. But, you know, Jeff Lunho, who is a former tech guy, set up this wonderful database there for the St. Louis Cardinals. He uh, set up this database with all these young players on. He's now the Astros GM. He traveled across there. He set up the same system for them. It's obviously working. You can see where the Astros are. But my one question is, Jeff, why didn't you change the passwords? Because that's all they did. They just logged on to the, the Houston Astros website and used the same password you used while you were a Cardinal. Is that really hacking or is that just stupidity? I'll leave that one down to you. This was the Farnham Report. See you next week. So we're now at midsummer. The British American football season is uh, over that ridge, heading towards the finale of Brit Bowl, and and we start turning our attention towards the start of the college football season, the start of the NFL season. Woo-hoo! Well, we're only a few weeks away now from uh, from the preseason starting in the NFL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But of course, bench warmers and our associated podcasts, we've always been big fans of the NFL International Series. Yeah, the time. Well, yeah, the time when we get to go to Wembley, we get to see the NFL do its thing here on our shores. And well, only a few weeks ago they announced that college football is going to be back next yeah, year. Yeah, it's going to be on in Ireland. So it's fantastic that we get an opportunity to see the best of America do what they do best. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's because that uh, that college thing, I've been doing that for years, but I had a bit of a break, and that, that that's really big, more so than the NFL. When you look at the the sports landscape over the last few months, and uh, and you know so many scandals and corruption and things, oh, yeah. the likes of FIFA and and everything that's happened there, it's good to see American football ready to come over here and do what it does, free of scandals, free but from yeah. corruption, you know, just a clean game. You think you you really believe American football is is a clean game? Well, what's wrong with it? I mean, FIFA might be a little further along the road than the NFL are, but I think they're heading to the same destination, Dave. Yeah, this is something I've noticed up in left field, as, oh, left as I'm prone to sit. <laughs> I'll tell you what I've been seeing. And yeah, we don't normally talk about the European football, the uh, the English game, if you will. Soccer. But soccer. The problems FIFA have been having, I think, come down to one root cause, and that is... It is its own judge, jury and executioner. Before the external organisation of the FBI got involved, FIFA said, well, we've heard these rumours about this alleged corruption, but we've investigated ourselves and we found out we're completely (laughs) innocent. (laughs) The NFL, in my opinion, and all the big American leagues have got the same issues. You want to know why? Because they self-regulate. Those three strands of governance, they rarely sit with one man in the NFL. I'm talking about God himself, <gasps> Roger Goodell. I'm Dean. I'll give you an example, a current example. We've all seen the disgrace of Tom Brady and the New England Patriots deflating footballs. <laughs> these very, these very <laughs> items. He's decided to appeal the decision made by Roger Goodell. Now, who's hailing his appeal? Roger Goodell. <laughs> Roger Goodell is sitting in judgment on his own judgment made in an issue on deflated footballs. The NFL has treated deflated footballs in the first instance as a more serious as a more serious offence than assaulting and battering your wife or fiance at the time. And we've seen minimal suspensions in other domestic abuse cases in the NFL. We've got possibly one of the most offensive organisations in all of sports, still ploughing the course because of tradition, and I'm talking about the Washington football team. They've got an offensive logo, an offensive name. The people that are, the people that it, it, they claim that it honours tell this organisation it's offensive, and they just plough that course continually. It's a self-regulating organisation, sitting outside the, to an extent, the rules of the country in which it exists. And when you've got something like that, without checks and balances, that thinks it can regulate itself. It is going to be prone to navel gazing. It's going to be prone to self-interest, and it's going to be prone to protecting its own interests at all costs. And that's what I've seen from left field. What I find interesting about the NFL, and it's 
probably different from any other sport that we cover, I would say, maybe, is that the NFL is football. Yeah. That there's no... Although there are international bodies for American football, you're not in this position where the likes of FIFA, which sits over all domestic leagues, the NFL is a domestic league, but it is the start and finish of American football on a professional level. I think that, again, feeds into the risk I was talking about, about checks and balances. There is not an annual NFL delegate conference which sets the business for the year uh, where... Of course which, there is. Where even of course there is, because you get like uh, Jerry Jones calls Roger Goodell, <laughs> tells him what he wants, and gets what he wants. <laughs> I can see your point. I really can see your point because, but I don't think it's just NFL, like you no, say. No. I think that I think it's I think it's widespread. But are they the untouchables? No. If you put yourself in the spotlight, like the NFL do, as much as they do, and broadcast and publicise yourself as much as they do. You, you know, people are going to pick up on it. And unfortunately, it seems like uh, maybe the next step down from the ladder, like James was saying, but, from FIFA, is the NFL next because they're the next big spotlight. But do you not think, at some point, God is going to turn around and go, hang on, it's our game, we make the rules, go away? As you know, not already done that to an extent in a lot of these instances, though. But that's to the people within the organisation... I, I'm talking about somebody from the outside, an investigate the uh, team come in, and say, we've uh, we've heard rumblings of. Um... But it, it, it's interesting you say that because what I find from the NHL's perspective as a as our hockey analyst is that Roger Goodell wielding that kind of power that you're saying is the example that somebody like Gary Bettman, who runs the NHL, holds up as what he wants to be. Ahead, yeah. I, I could never see the NBA getting to that stage where it, the, the power resides in one person, but it doesn't mean to say that the power residing in a lot of people doesn't still give the same effect. It's just really covered up well. So do you think Adam Silver, as commissioner of the NBA, is fair in comparison to the likes of Goodell? Oh, more than, more than so, but maybe that's because the portrayal and the media side that we get to see is played very cleverly. I've just... Uh, I've just been told that Roger Goodell, while we've been talking, has, uh, has sent us a tweet, uh, <laughs> and he wants to know he wants to know whether we we should rethink our opinion of him and his league. So I just want to put it out to the uh, judiciary board of bench warmers: uh, Have we gone too far today? No. no. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's all we've got time for this week. Don't shoot me, Roger. We'll see you next week. <laughs>